our security policy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a patriot. This man is fearless. He is selfless. He is devoted. He is relentless. Agree or disagree with all of the conclusions and lines of inference that he has just shared with us, which are spelled out in so much more detail in his book and his online course, Agree or Disagree, we can only be immensely indebted to you, Frank Gaffney, patriot, for raising the right questions that others fear to raise. Now, a man who can testify about how it feels to live in a nation, a society, an entire continent that has slid further down into the influence of those who wish us ill based on their holy book, the Quran, is our next speaker. I'm grateful that a friend of Centennial Institute and of last year's Western Conservative Summit is back with us to make the introduction of our guest from the Netherlands. Craig Silverman is known to many of us as one of Colorado's most accomplished attorneys and lawyers. He has been a prosecutor. In a better world, he would have been elected the district attorney of Denver, and Bill Ritter might never have been governor of Colorado. <laughs> Craig Silverman recently completed a stellar year run of a dozen years as the microphone partner of another good friend of Centennial and the Summit, Dan Kaplis. Afternoons just aren't the same without you on the radio anymore, Craig, so for consolation, we bring up now in person Craig Silverman. What a great honor it is to be here again this year and for this specific purpose. I am a Denver boy, fourth generation, and I think all of you know that we lost one of Denver's finest to senseless, stupid gang violence last weekend. Even as we speak, Denver Police Officer Selena Hollis is being buried at Fairmount Cemetery. And some people in this city don't want to talk about the gang problem around here. But that won't make it go away. Bad things do not go away if you close your eyes and shut your ears. We have to be able to talk about these things, especially about violent bullies and thugs who would hurt us and intimidate us. I was a prosecutor in this great city for 16 years, and I've had the privilege of being a lawyer for over 30 years in Colorado. I treasure the rule of law, not Sharia law. I was blessed to do that radio show, <laughs> Kaplis and Silverman, some of you might wonder what happened. Well, in the words of Tom Coburn, we got term limited, okay? I am not a Republican, but after watching what's gone on for a while now, I'm surely not a Democrat anymore. I am not all that conservative, but I come in all humility to you conservatives for confession and forgiveness. I voted for Barack Obama, and I can't deny it. I would if I could, but I did it on live radio, and C-SPAN 2 was in the studio that day. I thought Barack Hussein Obama was ideally situated to speak simple truths to the Islamic world. And I would think that a lot of people in that world would understand their need for change. But he wouldn't do it. He did not do it, and he will not do it. He proved that in Cairo and hundreds of other ways since then. Even though I still have my severe doubts about John McCain, I apologize to you. It won't happen again. As I had to admit to my radio partner, Dan Kaplis, okay, you were right about Barack Obama, but I was right about Mel Gibson. <laughs> it, 
The economy is the number one issue for most people in this upcoming election. But to me, the bigger issue is national security and our very survival. I can no longer defend Barack Obama, especially on those most important issues. Number one, the safety of America. Number two, I worry about the safety of the Jewish state of Israel. I have the pleasure of reading a lot of books, but no book has affected me more dramatically in the last couple of decades than this book that you were all given, Mark for Death. It's an amazing book. It captured my attention from first to last. Herod Felders is a brave man. He refuses to be intimidated. He is a profile in courage. So are a lot of people that you've had the pleasure to meet, like Pam Geller and Robert Spencer and Frank Gaffney and Senator John Andrews. But Herod Wilders, his life experience is extraordinary. Just like I'm a Denver boy, he's a Dutch boy, and now quite a man, quite a political leader, and I think he is a truth teller. I love freedom of speech, so does Herod Wilders. His book, Mark for Death, is all about that and he brings a perspective that we don't have. He's from Europe. He's seen what's gone on there. He knows what's going on in the Middle East, and it's great that he worries about America. I'm excited to hear from Herod Builders. What an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Herod Builders. Thank you, Craig, for your most kind words. Thank you, friends, ladies and gentlemen, for inviting me to this Western Conservative Summit. For me, it's always an honor and a privilege to come to America. I was here a few weeks ago to meet with my dear friend, uh, Michelle Bachmann, a representative um, of you to talk to talk about indeed the threat of Islam both to America and Europe and today I'm very proud to be in Denver the gateway to the West this is as I see it America's heartland conservative heartland where the spirit of your pioneers still lives and I know, I know that I come at a sad moment. Many of you have been affected by the enormous wildfires raging not far from here. Thousands have been evacuated and some of them are even staying, as I heard, in this hotel. And few things, ladies and gentlemen, few things are as terrible as losing your homes and I want to express my deepest sympathy with all the people affected by this disaster and I want to offer my condolences to the families and friends of those who have lost their lives in the fires and I am impressed I am impressed by the solidarity and the help which the people of Denver extend to the victims. You live in a great and generous city. Denver is also privileged to be the home of the Colorado Christian University and the Centennial Institute with its motto, Faith, Family and Freedom. Your motto shows that you have your priorities right. Faith, family, and freedom are indeed the pillars of our Judeo-Christian civilization and need to be 
defended. I feel honored to have been here invited to address you today about the situation in Europe and in particular in my own country, the Netherlands. And this situation serves as a warning in what might happen to America if you fail to be vigilant. As US President Andrew Jackson so rightfully said, and I quote, remember my fellow citizens that eternal vigilance is the price of liberty and that you must pay the price if you wish to secure the blessing, end of quote. But first, let me start by introducing myself. I am one of the 150 members of the House of Representatives in the Netherlands, a small country of almost 17 million people in Western Europe. I am the leader of the Party for Freedom, and my party is the third largest of 11 parties represented in the Dutch Parliament. And perhaps many of you think that the life of this politician in the Netherlands resembles the life of the members of your own Congress. Unfortunately, that is not the case. For the past eight years, I have been living under 24-hour police protection. Wherever I go, plainclothes policemen go with me. I live in a government safe house, heavily protected and bulletproof. I am driven every day again from my safe house to the Dutch Parliament building in armored police cars with flashing blue lights. I have not walked the streets on my own in the last eight years. And when I occasionally go to a restaurant or to a movie theater, the police will have to check everything out. My wife and I have lived in prison cells, in army barracks, just to be safe from assassins. And why? Why do I need this protection? I'm not a president or a king. I'm a mere parliamentarian. I have, however, been marked for death for criticizing Islam. I was placed under police protection in early November 2004 when an Islamic fanatic murdered the Dutch filmmaker Theo van Gogh because he had criticized Islam. Van Gogh was slaughtered on broad daylight in the streets of Amsterdam. And a few hours later, the police found a letter written by the assassin threatening to kill me as well. What have I done, you might ask, to deserve those kind of death threats? What I did is candidly express my view about Islam. My view, in a nutshell, is that Islam, rather than a religion, is predominantly a totalitarian ideology striving for world dominance. I believe that Islam and freedom are incompatible. Some people... <laughs> some people do not want to hear this message. And that is why they threaten people and to murder everyone who states this truth. And I'm not the only one who has been marked for death. You all know the British author Salman Rushdie or the Scandinavian cartoonists Kurt Westergaard or Lask Wilkes who all have been victim of assassination attempts. However, if you really love freedom, you have to speak the truth. And if not, we will all fall victim to Islam. Like earlier, the people in the Middle East, in Northern Africa, in Persia, in India, and in Indonesia fell victim